the host of the Dana Lash Show. She also is a spokesperson for the NRA. Dana, good morning to you. Good morning, Dana. Good morning, everyone. All right, so the Florida hey, State Rachel. Legislature has uh, passed some gun control bills. Uh, the bill creates, among other things, a risk protection order allowing police to confiscate guns of people who are involuntary committed under the Baker Act or who pose a violent threat to themselves or others. And it also has a guardian program where certain members of uh, mm -hmm. teaching staff or uh, faculty might be able to carry guns. What's your reaction to what Florida has done? Well, you know, I, I always support school districts and teachers and parents coming together to determine how to best address their school security issue. And this is something that schools all across America are going to have to determine on a case by case basis. I would caution everyone that there's no one size fits all for schools when it comes to security because every school is different, locations mm -hmm. are different, you know, parents and teachers are different, and some teachers may feel more comfortable than others training and and caring in school right. and of course you want teachers if they want to carry if they voluntarily want to it's not something that should be mandatory and they go in for training and they feel comfortable doing that at school then that's a, that should definitely be something that's available to them and also getting rid of gun free zones i mean once again i just want to throw the statistic out that since 1950 to july of 2016 98.4% of mass shootings these mass casualty incidents have taken place right. in gun free Zone. So this is the one thing that we, we immediately first need to get rid of is this this idea that creating soft targets and making people defenseless somehow keeps them safer. Right. Um, and well, let me so, just, let me I just mean, add that, what know, else? The NRA believes, you know, and has issued. Right. Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, was, here, here's some other things that Florida put into play that the governor might have a problem with. He's got a few days to sign or not sign. He's against allowing mm -hmm. teachers and staff to be armed after 140 hours of training. He is against raising the rifle age to 21. He says a three-day waiting period, funding school officers and the training, and he wants to give police, as Steve mentioned, more power to seize weapons and banning bump stocks. So Florida came out strong. The governor doesn't like two elements of this. Do you look for him to pass this? Would the NRA be in support of that? I'm not exactly sure what he is going to do. I know the NRA has come out already, and we've issued a statement at, at opposing increasing the age to purchase long guns simply because a two-year period doesn't solve psychosis. And furthermore, you'd be disenfranchising. You, you would be rendering defenseless a lot of individuals out there who live alone who are young adults. And it seems insane to me to, and, I, and to millions of NRA members, by the way, many of whom are young adults also, it seems crazy to, to put their liberties on the chopping block after the systemic failures of government. I mean, for crying out loud, the FBI, the acting deputy director, David Bodick, just came out and briefed members of Congress saying that, yes, the FBI did fail to follow up on two tips and saying that, yes, they did get enough information from one of those tips that they should have acted through their mm -hmm. Miami field right. office, and they didn't. But yet we're talking about punishing innocent millions, millions of, of law-abiding gun owners for the failures of government to enforce the laws that exist that would have prevented this tragedy. Right. And despite those failures, the NRA right now is being seen as the bad guy in this situation. In fact, the Connecticut governor just called you a terrorist organization. Take a look at this. The NRA as it exists today um, is a far cry from the NRA that in 1999 said teachers shouldn't be um, uh, uh, shouldn't carry weapons in schools, uh, or uh, uh, between uh, in the 90s also said that we should have universal background ch checks. They have, in essence, become a terrorist organization. So, are you a terrorist? I, I, I mean, I'm a mom. I have kids. I mean, we're, we're dealing with homework issues late last night. I mean, you know, maybe making my kids get all their homework done makes me some kind of terrorist. You know, I can't take seriously anyone who, who says that they're coming to this conversation. I cannot take their claims of good faith genuinely or seriously at all when they decide to insult and smear millions of law-abiding Americans. And one of the things I'm asking for parents who are NRA members or law-abiding gun owners to do is they can, they can just shoot a quick video, upload a video, 
on social media using the hashtag NRA parents to explain why they carry and why they're not terrorists. Because I'm tired of people questioning mothers and fathers and saying that they love their firearms more than they love their children. One of the reasons that I have a firearm is to protect my family, right. is to protect my kids. I mean, honestly, you know, guys, let's be real. In my mind, I'm like seven foot tall, 400 pounds, right? <laughs> but in reality, right. I'm five six and I weigh a buck 25. I'm going to be easily overpowered. I want to be able to defend my family and I'm not going to be mm -hmm. shamed for it. But I'm not going to be shamed for it by the Connecticut governor right. or anyone else that wants to smear me or anyone as terrorists right. because we disagree and with him and we have a different way of protecting our but families. But you're not against universal background checks though, right? Like the ones that failed in California or the ones that have failed in Colorado. I mean, I do believe that one of the things that we need to do is make sure that states are reporting fully and accurately, which they're not doing mm -hmm. all of their criminal convictions to the National Crime Information Center for nicks to check when someone purchases a firearm. Look, right. NRA and Wayne LaPierre have come out strong against this, actually longer than I've been, I've been able to vote, really, uh, saying that we need to make sure that this system works accurately. And I just want to, again, the political class could fix this tomorrow. They could fix it today. Mm -hmm. They could say, look, these states need to report this into the system. And a real quick note, because I know everyone brings up Prince versus the United States, that was a, that was a case that was about the federal government forcing the states to implement and administer a system by the federal government. It doesn't prevent states from reporting convictions, people right. who are dangerous to others who've been convicted in a court of law, sending that to NCIC so we can stop dangerous people, dangerous criminals from purchasing firearms. That's what we all want. We all need to come together to make sure that system works. All right. Thank and you, Dana. Dana. You're not a terrorist. Thank you very <laughs> Thank much you for so joining much. us live.